Hi, this is Premjit from CivilEra.com. So today we have a new video and a new blog and we will discuss four tips for foundation design, rather foundation sizing. So these are tips that will be quite useful for entry level engineers. Let's look at what we have to discuss today. Now, I had written a blog a few days back regarding foundation sizing or the importance of geotechnical engineering. So you can see that previous blog as well after reading this blog or after seeing this video. So those who are watching on YouTube can come to civilera.com slash blog and then read this blog and the previous blog and those who are on my website can see the video on the youtube which is linked here so if you click on this link you will get the previous blog and coming on to today's topic you can read as well as listen to the video for better understanding so here first thing is factored or unfactored load for foundation sizing this is a question many times a fresh engineer asks us the Confusion is since most of the time you use factored load for all the designs. Now here, one important thing that you need to know is when you say safe bearing capacity, the soil consultant would have already down factored your SBC. For example, if the soil report says that 200 kilonewton per meter square is your safe bearing capacity, in reality he has down factored a capacity of 600 by a factor of 3 and reduced your safe bearing capacity which means that if your foundation size is from say a column load of 1000 kilonewton 1000 divided by 200 if you get 5 meter square the actual needed if you don't have a factor of safety in soil capacity is three times lesser than that so which means you have already considered a factor of safety there so because of this reason it's not logical to consider another factor of safety for the loads as well so one factor of safety is enough so you have to consider unfactored load for your sizing of the footing now it ends there once you have done your sizing the rest of your design will have to be based on factored pressure and things like that so if you are confused on this we do have a video put in the course page of our website so you can go here by clicking this so you can go to civilera.com and find the foundation design course and there is a free video put there for your understanding so the entire isolated footing design is explained and that will make it very clear what i'm talking about the second question that generally students ask is is it enough to design foundation for gravity loads the answer is no i have elaborated here the reasons many times your gravity load may not be the governing case and again it also depends on if you have pinned or if you have fixed the base of your column many times when you have pinned the base of your column your gravity loads might be more than your seismic loads especially for a low rise building you need to check that i'm not saying every time that will be the case but many times but when you have fixed your base the moments also comes into picture your column base will be having moments and that also needs to be taken care and when you look at the sizing there are every chance that your seismic combination might govern as well it all depends now when to fix when to pin your foundation or the column base that we will discuss some sometime later in a separate blog or in a separate video if you are really keen our course on building design covers all these points and you can take up one of this for better understanding i guess this is all mentioned in the free video that i mentioned here to refer Anyway, to give you a basic tip, I will just say in case of a pinned base, all you need to do is P by A should be ensured to be less than or equal to your SBC. Whereas when you have fixed your base, it becomes P by A plus or minus M by Z plus or minus M by Z. This will be your X and this will be your 
y so this has to be less than or equal to sbc in which case the magnitude of these two moments your column major and minor axis moments are also going to play a role in deciding your area foundation so if you have forgotten all this please refer your geotechnical textbooks and you will be able to recollect what you have learned before another additional point that i want you to consider is the close number 6352 in is 1893 2016 now this is a relief in fact so you can refer the code which says that when earthquake forces are included net bearing pressure in soils can be increased as per table one so this is something which you can consider when you have your seismic becoming critical so coming to table one here you can see that if your soil type is a that is if it is rock or hard soils your increase in sbc can be 50 percent and if you have a medium or stiff soils then it can be 25 percent so what this means is if you have hard rock then if your sbc given by the consultant soil consultant is 200 kilonewton per meter square it can be increased to 300 kilonewton per meter square in which case your size of the foundation can come down now what do you mean by rock what do you mean by hard soils it's all mentioned in table 2 it's self explanatory you can read here what is type a well graded gravel or well graded sand both with less than 5 percent passing 75 mm sieves so all this you need to look into your n value should be more than 30 that is the main criteria so if you are having that condition then your sbc can be different so that's a relief for seismic combinations you will end up having lesser foundation size you also need to read all the notes here and in case of confusion you will have to check out this with the soil consultant if he has done the sbc calculations based on all these parameters then only you can use this enhancement of the sbc so it's a good point to ensure that you discuss this with the soil consultant before taking a decision on this now lastly the fourth point many ask me can i have force envelope taken for sizing the foundation can i ignore taking the reactions one by one from the combinations instead of that can i not take the force envelope unfactored i will take force envelope from e tabs and can i finish off my sizing again the answer is probably not one reason is that if your gravity is critical then enhancement of sbc is not allowed if seismic is critical it is allowed so you will miss out if you take an envelope to understand which combination is critical but you can do that by eliminating dead load live load combination from the envelope and doing it separate you can size your foundation once for dead load live load and then in the envelope you can exclude dead load live load and then take the maximum from seismic combination and then check the sizing whichever gives you the maximum sizing you can take so that's possible by doing it two times rather than doing it many times for each combination but another problem is if you have fixed your base then you cannot use force envelope at all for sizing again the reason is you will end up with three forces at one location that is one vertical load then two moments so it becomes an interactive process you cannot always take your envelope and size to make it more clear i will just mention or i will explain it in terms of a few values so assume that you have a reaction at one column base say you have a reaction and uh, you are planning to size the foundation so let us assume that you have m33 in terms of e tabs i am writing and m22 which is m y m33 is your m x your major moment so assume that you have a lot of combinations you may have 18 combinations or more so let us assume that for dead load live load unfactored dead load live load you have a combination and then you have a load of 1000 and say you have a moment of 20 and you have a my of 10 
and for another seismic combination let me write it as seismic combination one it could be dead load plus eqx or whatever i'm not bothered about that assume that it is a seismic combination and assume that you have a load of 900 which is less than dead load live load and assume that you have a moment of 60 and then say you have a moment of 5 and say for another you have a load of 800 and then say you have moment of say 2 and then say m22 is something like 50 and say another combination seismic you have something like 950 and then say this is 1 and say this is 49 so here if you take maximum of everything that is envelope then you will end up designing this for 1000 60 and 50 which is wrong because you are going to mix up the combinations 1000 is coming from dead load live load when seismic is not acting 60 is coming when you have seismic acting in the x direction and 50 is coming when you have seismic acting in the y direction so it's not really practical to consider envelope because when you consider envelope then you will end up oversizing your footing it is not the right thing to do it's an interactive design wherein you have p mx and my the net effect of which is going to decide the size of the footing so you have to take it in that manner it's not possible to take the envelope now some engineers think that okay let me design for the worst three cases and they say this is a worst case this is the worst another one and this is another one that also need not be the critical cases because in this case you have 950 one and then 49 so easily this can also become critical depending upon your calculation so there is no guarantee that if you take maximum p maximum mx and maximum my three designs and then say okay i have done all the three and this should give me the largest size that's not true either it can be that this also becomes critical so in case of your base fixed you are required to size it for all the combinations and then arrive at the foundation sizing i hope this clarified the fourth point so all the four points are equally important there are many more points that are significant like this and your success lies in understanding this early in your career working with a reputed consultant or undertaking training which helps you to understand this sooner so i hope you enjoyed this video and blog wish you all the success in your career thank you